Welcome back to Process Dynamics and Control. Today we're going to be covering some of the material um, and reviewing some of the material that we've learned over the last couple weeks. If you come to the course website at CHE 436 and then uh, scroll on down to um, the exam 2 review. So we're going to cover lecture 23. Uh, there are two exam review sessions. Uh, there's a lot of material, so I wanted to break this up into two. I have an exam uh, review sheet that we'll be covering uh, here, just some of the topics that we've covered over the last couple weeks, and then uh, a practice exam. If you select that, it'll open up a practice exam. The solutions to one and two are shown below here. Um, there you can see practice exam question one, and then question two. And then if you go on to the, um, the next lecture, it'll show the solutions to uh, problems three and problems four. Okay, so just a couple problems uh, that are representative of the material that we've learned. And um, you know, if we just go back here, we're gonna be covering this uh, practice uh, review sheet right here. And so I'll just go ahead and open that up and <clears throat> tell you a little bit about some of the material um, and, and uh, review that. Okay, so what we started with um, in this section is is really the unsteady state balances okay where you have accumulation equals in minus out plus generation minus consumption okay and then we can uh, fit uh, it, the mass or mole balances okay so if it's mass it's just going to be dm dt equals the mass flow rate in minus the mass flow rate <coughs> out of our um, of our control volume. If it's moles, then it might be d and dt, okay, and dot in minus and dot out, and then it, you might have a generation or a consumption term there as well. But basically all you're doing is, um, you know, deriving these balances is just replacing uh, in this accumulation in, out, generation, and consumption we're just filling in um, the different flow rates or accumulation terms as well. Okay, uh, degrees of freedom, the basic idea there is just you wanna make sure you have the same number of equations as variables and uh, you know how to work with these dynamic balance equations for uh, different processes. Okay, so once we derived the unsteady state balances, the next thing that we wanted to do is, is be able to solve them. And so Laplace transforms are one way to solve these dynamic equations. Uh, we also spent a, a bit of time doing numerical techniques like using integrators uh, and keeping it in the time domain. But you know this other way, which is Laplace domain, is just to convert it into the Laplace domain. It becomes algebra, um, and then you can rearrange things and, and solve. Okay, so uh, there's a general solution technique. Uh, you might have some time delays. We also covered the initial and final value theorems. Um, we talked about partial fraction expansion. So when you can't find something in the Laplace tables, you might have to break it into uh, multiple pieces and then convert each of those pieces back to the time domain. Uh, we talked about repeated factors with the partial fractions, uh, complex variables and how they give you sine and cosine terms that oscillate, and also talking about the solution to these, uh, these differential equations. Okay, so that was chapter three on Laplace transforms. And then going on to chapter four, we had um, transfer functions. So transfer functions, um, they are, uh, they relate inputs to outputs. Okay, so I might have an input u of s and uh, output of x of s. And these come from these uh, balance equations after we've converted them into the Laplace domain. Uh, it, re it relates uh, very simply, let's say I had something k times tau s plus one. For example, that would be a transfer function that relates an input u of s to an output x of s. Or algebraically, I can just write that x of s over u of s equals k uh, tau s plus one. Okay, so um, so we get those from ODEs, um, you know, by by deriving these uh, from balance equations or other equations. Um, we want to talk also about properties of transfer functions in parallel in series, how to get the process gain by putting it into a standard form. Um, and then also how to take a, uh, a model, uh, some equations, and then linearize those, get those into 
uh, Laplace domain and into transfer function form. So we're going to actually have a couple examples that will show on how to do this with the transfer functions. Okay, so that's it on uh, chapter four. And then as we go on to chapter five, there are specific types of transfer functions that we're interested in. We have first and second order uh, systems. And uh, if we have inputs, such as a step, a ramp, or a sinusoidal input, we want to know how these second or first order systems are going to respond. So here is a first or second order system. You know, first order system is just going to be, you know, the k over tau s plus one. Second order system um, is just a little bit more complicated with this new zeta parameter. Okay, but you ought to be able to look at um, these and know some of the characteristics about if I put in a step here, um, what is the response going to be coming out? Okay, um, we also covered integrating processes. So integrating processes are those if you have a, uh, a step input, okay, that the output is going to uh, continue in one direction or another. Uh, there's no real steady state uh, that it comes to. And uh, the, the final value depends on the history of, of the inputs, okay? So integrating processes are like those with, you know, maybe a tank um, where you have an inlet, but, you know, no outlet. Okay, and as you uh, have a step input, it's going to increase in level. But then when you stop that input, it isn't going to go back to that same level that it started with. Okay, so it integrates. Um, we also have the second order systems, and I wrote those there already uh, in this standard form. Uh, depending on the value of zeta, it's going to be either overdamped, critically damped, or underdamped. And there's a lot of things we can say about the rise time, peak time, settling time, overshoot, decay ratio and the period and how those relate to tau and zeta. And I'll show you a chart of that in just a little bit. Okay, so we also have, uh, you know, sinusoidal responses, um, you know, the amplitude, uh, output amplitude versus the input amplitude. Um, and we just reviewed earlier a couple equations on that. Okay, pretty minor topic on the sinusoidal, resp <clears throat> sinusoidal response. Okay, um, let's just go on to more complicated systems. So this is... Um, more than first or second order systems. So this might be a third, fourth, tenth order system, something like that. And these are just a little bit more complicated, but we can still analyze these and tell how they're going to respond. So we have poles and zeros. Poles are the roots of the denominator. Zeros are the roots of the numerator. And we just want to know their impact on stability. Okay, so if we have any positive real roots, then it's going to be unstable. And then uh, we can also plot in the ima real imaginary plane. Okay, so that's our imaginary axis. That's our real axis. And we might have poles and zeros around here. And so just knowing the location of some of these zeros or poles, um, we can tell how the system is going to respond, whether it's going to be stable, unstable, whether it's going to oscillate or be smooth. All right, systems in parallel. So if we have uh, two transfer functions um, in series, for example, versus um, in parallel, okay, um, you know, these two will, G1 and G2, G1 and G2, okay, so this can be combined into G1 times G2, so these two are equivalent. <clears throat> and then if you have them in parallel, then it's going to be uh, G1 plus G2. Okay, so it can simplify down um, and, uh, in, uh, in these transfer function forms, in the, in the block diagram forms. Okay, we also have um, time delays as well, pot A approximation. Uh, you know, if we want to go back to a, um, so we, we can go from a higher order system Okay, so I'm just going to write something like this, s plus 1, s plus 2, s plus 3. Uh, we can say that that is approximately equal to 1 over s plus 3 times e to the minus 3s. Okay, that would be a Taylor series approximation. Uh, if we want to use Skogestad's rule, we'd say that is going to be equal to uh, 1 over s plus 4. 4e to the minus 2s. 
Okay, there's additional material on that, but um, essentially it's just approximations to get it back into first order plus dead time form. Okay, and then we use Pade approximation to go back the other way um, to take something like this and go back to a polynomial uh, form. Okay, if we don't want to deal with the dead time there. So that's what the Pade approximation is for. Um, so just remember on approximating higher order systems, we have the Taylor series and then also the Skogestad's uh, half rule. Okay, so uh, the last topic, um, this was a little bit that we did with Excel, uh, just for fitting second order systems or you know arbitrary systems where we derive the analytic solution with unknown parameters and then fit those uh, in Excel. There's also just a, for second order system, this uh, inflection point for second order system. I'll just show you that as well. Okay, so this is the uh, material that we covered, two through seven. Um, and, uh, you know, hopefully these uh, exam uh, practice problems here will help you uh, review some of the material as well. Um, and what I want to do now is just share uh, just a couple slides. Um, I just had a couple that... Uh, put together on this, um, you know, it's just some concepts. We already covered uh, essentially this list, okay, in that last one. Um, one of the big things I really, really want you to do is be able to take a problem statement, and that's going to be similar to problem four on the practice exam. I'll be able to take a problem statement and then be able to um, uh, do a couple things with that, okay? So we want to be able to derive the balance equations. Um, next, we're going to linearize. Uh, we're going to linearize those equations so that we can get them into Laplace uh, transforms uh, in, in transfer function form, and then specify an input, whether that's a step, a ramp, a sinusoidal input, and then be able to solve for what the um, the response would be. Okay, so this would be involving uh, transient material or energy balances. Okay, when we derive derive those, uh, develop transfer functions, um, you know, use uh, these variables in the Laplace domain to solve <clears throat> for a system response. Okay, so if we have, uh, for solving transfer functions, uh, we want to first of all find the order of our transfer function. Um, and if it's first order, then we're going to find um, uh, this input. Okay, so this would be, you know, a lot of times we say that's u of s, okay. Um, or u of s instead of x of s um, and is once we get y of s once we know once we know u of s uh, and we know g of s from our our transfer function uh, we can solve for y of s and then we want to see if there's an inverse laplace transform and is equation in the book um, you know if there isn't um, and there isn't one in the laplace tables then uh, I'm going to do partial fractions, okay, partial fractions, and then once we can invert it, then we're uh, done with the problem. Okay, so we can use the uh, any equations that we can find that are kind of these, you know, for first order systems, There's you know, those are well studied and well known, so chances are there's going to be an equation there, but if not, uh, it's a little bit more complicated than use a partial fraction expansion to break it down into pieces that can be inverted. Okay, so let's say it's a second order system instead. So we have our transfer function g of s. Then uh, what we want to do is find um, these three parameters fit into standard form. And uh, you know if it's if it's going to be um, underdamped, okay, then zeta is going to be between zero and one. Um, if we had a step input then we can use all of these correlations between overshoot, decay ratio, period, rise time, peak time, etc. Okay, and there's, but if it's critically damped, use this equation from the uh, third edition of, of the textbook, and if it's um, greater than one, then use that equation. Okay, let's say you have a sinusoidal input. Okay, then there's some equations there. Um, if uh, you know, also, you can use partial fractions to help solve that. Okay, um, let's say we have a higher order system. So here was first order, uh, off to the right was second order, and then now we have higher order. We might want to find the poles to the system. 
um, and be able to tell if it's going to be stable, unstable, oscillating, or smooth. And then uh, maybe break it down with partial fractions to find simpler expressions. Or you can also approximate the higher order system with an FOPDT using the Taylor series or Skogasat's half rule um, in order to be able to approximate um, the FOPDT. Pot A is to go from FOPDT back to um, polynomial form. Okay, here's the graphical method for first order systems. Remember, if you uh, just have data like this, this was a, a step input. Okay, so the input was stepped up and then uh, we had uh, this type of response. We can draw this tangent line right here and then uh, look at um, the total delta y. Okay, and then we look at um, 0 0.632 times the delta y. Okay, and this would be our delta u. So kp is going to be delta y over delta u. Um, and then we have, uh, in this case, theta p, that's our dead time, apparent dead time, that is zero in this case, and then tau p is going to be the time when it gets to 63% of the way there. Okay, so that's going to be one tau. Um, okay, for second order systems, um, you know, this is kind of a similar thing, you draw this uh, right at the inflection point, okay, right here. And what we're going to do is we want to approximate the second order system with a first order response. So it's not going to be perfect, and we're going to approximate this, this S-shaped part right here with just dead time from the first order system. So it's not really going to match right here, but then after it starts coming up, it'll match um, pretty well. Okay, um, so we draw this tangent line. We're gonna say that this is gonna be our dead time, okay, where that tangent line hits the, uh, where, where it started. And then uh, the, the tau is gonna be how, um, in this case, if you, you know, draw this tangent line, another kind of shortcut rule for the second order systems is, is uh, where this reaches the steady state value, then that's an approximate tau. Or you could say, um, you know, just approximate this with a first order plus dead time and then find out where that goes to about 63% of the way there, kind of like we did with the first order systems. Okay, but uh, there's a couple different ways to graphically obtain these. Um, essentially, what we're doing is we're, we're just saying that um, you know, this would be one method for doing second order systems and the graphical method. Okay, so let's look at the overall transfer function uh, for this system right here. Um, I can combine these two into one transfer function, which is G2 times G3, because they're in series. Okay, and then uh, I'll put a multiplication there. And then I have uh, these two are in parallel. So then this becomes let's see, G2 times G3 plus G4. Okay, so we add those together. That's going to be Y of S. And then we have G1 uh, right there with U of S coming in. Okay, and then just an overall transfer function is U of S, and that's going to be G1 times G2, uh, times quantity G2 times G3 plus G4. And then we have y of s um, coming out. Okay, so that's our, um, if we had to take all of this right here, that would be approximated by this one transfer function. Okay, so uh, so we when in series, you multiply, add when in parallel. Okay, let's say we had these uh, for g1, g2, uh, g3, and g4. That should be lowercase s right there. Okay, so for G1, let's just look at G1. First of all, what is the damping coefficient? And what will the response of G1 alone be? Um, will it be under, over damped, critically damped, or under damped? Okay, so I'm gonna put this into standard form. Uh, tau squared S squared plus two zeta tau S plus one. Okay, so this needs to be a one right here. So you just divide through by 18. And so that is six uh, divided by one over 18 s squared uh, plus uh, 6 over 18 
um, times s plus 1. Okay, and then uh, I, that needs to be over eight, uh, 6 divided by 18 as well. Okay, so divide uh, both the numerator and the denominator by 18. Okay, okay so uh, this then becomes the gain. That's our k. Um, this is tau squared. So then tau equals square root of 1 over 18. And then 2 zeta tau um, equals 6 divided by 18. Um, and then we had our tau value that we can plug in there. So zeta zeta equals 6 over 18. Uh, let's see, and then times 2 times tau. Okay, and then you can work out um, those numbers. Uh, zeta, in this case, is going to be less than 1. Okay, so uh, it's going to be under damped. Okay, zeta is going to be under damped. There's our value for zeta square root of 18 divided by 6. And so that's going to be less than 1. Okay, so um, we can look at this characteristic equation, which is the denominator of the second order systems. And if zeta is greater than 1, it's going to be over damped. Um, there's going to be two distinct real roots, no imaginary parts. Uh, critically damped, um, we'll have two equal real roots. And then under damped, we'll have two complex conjugate roots um, with imaginary parts to them. Okay, so under damped is going to oscillate. Okay, critically damped is just going to come up to the new uh, steady state value without oscillation. And under damped, over damped is going to come up slower. Okay, um, there are relationships between overshoot damping ratio period tau and zeta. But this is only for under damped systems. Okay, when zeta is less than 1. I like to use uh, this correlation especially because it only has zeta. It doesn't have tau in it. Okay, so um, for the same system, look at, let's look at the overall uh, transfer function. What are the zeros and the poles? Uh, is it converging or diverging? Is it oscillating or non-oscillating? Okay, um, so we can multiply all these together. Uh, that's just going to be equal to 6 over s squared plus 6s plus 18. Um, and then we will multiply by g2, which is 2 times g3, so that'd be 4 over s plus 2, um, plus, and then g4 is 3 over s minus 1. Okay, so um, when we multiply all this out, we're going to have all of these terms in our denominator. We can see that this one right here is going to be unstable. Okay, so that's going to go off to infinity. Um, but then also this one was oscillating, so it's going to oscillate and be unstable. Okay, and it's going to um, diverge. Okay, so we can multiply all that out and those will be our um, zeros. Um, the, the, when I set those equal to zero, it will be the uh, zeros. Okay, so what was the initial and final values of the previous transfer function? We can, um, you know, any uh, uh, overall transfer function. So if we have a signal, oh, let me go back. If we have a signal like y of s, the final value theorem, is that uh, you know the final value y infinity equals um, the limit as s goes to zero of s times y of s. Okay, so uh, what we can do is just um, normally if we have just a signal, we multiply by s. But if we have a transfer function, it's just going to be the limit as s goes to zero of g of s. Okay, and the reason why we do that is because we're assuming that there's a step input to the g of s. So um, that would normally be 1 over s, a step input, okay, to give us the y of s. Because y of s equals g of s times u of s. But if u of s equals 1 over s, then, um, then that means we have uh, g of s divided by s. And that would equal the y of s. And that's what we'd plug in here. And the s's are going to cancel, giving us just the limit of g of s as s goes to 0. 
and that will give us the final value for a step input to that transfer function. Okay, so uh, let's just look at this example. What are the initial and final values of z of s below? Okay, um, and so if we multiply by s, okay, and then take the limit as s goes to zero, that's going to be the final value. So that is going to be equal to a nine over, let's see, that would be two times three or nine over six, okay, or uh, three halves. Okay, so there's our uh, final value. Um, for that one, initial value is just gonna be the limit as s goes to infinity. Um, multiplying by s again, so if we have something like s plus nine over s plus two times s plus three, let's just go ahead and divide uh, both the numerator and the denominator by s. Okay, and that's going to be 1 plus 9 over s. Um, and actually, we need to do s squared here. <clears throat> okay, um, let's see. We've, we've got um, s goes to infinity, right. Okay, so let's, uh, let's do 1 over s plus 9 over s squared, and then we have, um, in this case, we're gonna have one plus two over s times one plus uh, three over s. I'm gonna run it out of room here. But that's gonna go to uh, zero, so the initial value is gonna be zero. Okay, so here we have uh, just another case, initial value uh, theorem, multiplied by s and set s equal to infinity. Okay, and then we'll divide both the top and bottom by s squared, and that gives us an initial value of one. Okay, final value theorem. Um, one caution with this is that we want to be checked to make sure the response is going to converge before we use it. Okay, so this is stable, that's stable, both uh, negative real roots. Um, when we set this equal to zero, we have a root of s equals negative one, s equals negative two. Uh, both of those are going to be negative real roots, so it's going to be stable. Um, so let's go ahead and multiply by s and then set s equal to zero. Okay, the limit as s goes to zero and so our final value is going to be zero. Okay, so that's it for this um, in terms of the review. Uh, so just to uh, summarize um, what we did, um, we had uh, you know, this material on unsteady balances, Laplace transforms, transfer functions, first and second order systems, and then more complicated systems, and then we did some final things um, with curve fitting. Um, and again, just come back to the um, uh, these practice exam problems and, and work through these. Make sure you understand uh, how to solve these systems. The, the questions on the midterm are gonna be similar uh, to what you see here.